Good morning. Yesterday we looked at the ultimate question, who is Jesus? Today we want to look at the consequences that arise from the answer to that question. So we're looking again at the Gospel of Mark. We're looking at verses, uh, chapter 8, verses 31 through uh, 33. And he began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and after three days rise again. He spoke this word openly. Then Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But when he had turned around and looked at his disciples, he rebuked Peter, saying, Get behind me, Satan, for you are not mindful of the things of God, but the things of men. Wow, that's a red-hot response from Jesus, isn't it? So only now, only after they have been our previous, yesterday we looked at how Jesus brought them to the question of who he was, only after they've made that decision and said, you are the Christ, now that they understand that, now Jesus is going to open the gates and explain to them the, the terrible suffering and things that are now going to come. They're faced with, you know, they swallowed the red pill, now they're going to find out what the truth is. Far from ascending the throne of human triumph, Jesus is going to be crucified. He's going to be tortured and and killed. He will be treated with violence and then rise in victory over death itself. He will lay the foundation for eternity and then open the way for reconciliation between God and man and man and man. So this isn't a quick fix. This requires a, a total change, a change of the mindset the disciples have had. And so what we're looking at here is a a total mental renegotiation of what the disciples have been thinking about. This means that everything is turned upside down. Everything is, is, is on the line here. So this enormous discontinuity between what they had been thinking things would be like in the kingdom before and what they're now finding out it's going to be like, that leads to a lot of cognitive dissonance. And so Peter is going to, Peter just reflexively comes back and he's going to respond with, with uh, rejection of this. So now Peter proposes something totally different, totally different from what Jesus just marked out. Jesus responds just as firmly as possible. And so he flatly rejects this and he says, get behind me, Satan. That's not something you want Jesus saying to you. Peter's resistance to God's plan is, is actually resistance to God's sacrifice. This is the total denial of God's purpose. This is, this is finding a way, a weaving around the cross, and Jesus doesn't do any weaving around the cross. Peter's resistance is actually a denial of God's plan of sacrifice. It's actually a compromise with Satan. It's saying, wait, don't go too far. Don't be too radical here. Uh, and it really is ultimately making way for sin to continue to exist forever, which is the ultimate compromise. And that's something that, of course, Jesus cannot do. God cannot do it. A little small compromise with sin would lead to the ultimate triumph of evil and the destruction of all life and all righteousness. So Jesus has to say no, and he says no firmly. There is no halfway place that God can go on this. There's no negotiation. There's no compromise. Jesus has to eradicate sin completely. So he has to die and give his life, his pure and perfect life, for our sins. God himself must die if there will be freedom and goodness in the universe. Otherwise, it all goes up in flames. And you know, the fact is that many Christians have never progressed beyond this point where Peter is here for this moment. Many Christians are saying, well, wait a minute, let's not go too far, hold on. But we need to come all the way. Jesus did everything to win and for us, and we need to to submit everything uh, for him. A lot of people are trying to leave open a space for some sin. And we even hear it preached sometimes from the pulpit. God God have mercy on those preachers. Let's pray together. Dear Father in heaven, uh, this is really putting it it out there. Now there's something that uh, brings us along. What do we do? How do we respond to this sacrifice? And so we look at these consequences and we are shaken just like Peter was. Uh, Does it really mean that much? Does it mean to go that far? Please, Lord, help us to be totally open to going all along the way with you in terms of right doing and giving up the wrong doing. Please, Lord, bless each heart that hears this message today. Lord, we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. God, help each one of us to understand and accept the consequences of the gift of God.